Have you ever heard someone say that your conscience is seared as a hot iron? You know that's in the Bible, and I always used to think it means that man, if I lose the connection of the Holy Spirit, if he don't convict me of sin, then I'm over the top. I'm gone beyond past feeling. And if I can't uh, feel a conviction of sin, then man, I must be apart from God. Did you know that's the totally opposite thing of what I believe now? Because that was under a guilty conscience. That was me being uh, under a performance mentality, you know, living under the law system. And that's what the law produces. It produces wrath. It produces a sense of guilt. But did you know that Jesus has come to set you free from the sense of guilt and condemnation? Let's look what this verse really means. It's found in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1 says, Now the Spirit, speaking of the Holy Spirit, speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Did you know what doctrines of devils is? It is the spirits or the influence that tries to accuse you because somehow they want you to be back under the law. You know, I'm here to tell you that the doctrine of the devils is, is no more. Jesus defeated them at the cross because why? Colossians 2 says that the law that, that was contrary to us living life abundantly was nailed to the cross. And Jesus triumphed over principalities and powers, made a public spectacle over them. So the doctrines of devils is just anyone telling you that you must do to become. You must do something and then God will bless you. It's a law system, people. Don't fall for that. Verse 2 says, Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, let's look at this for a minute. Having our conscience seared. And I thought, like I said, I was gone past feeling. You know, if I couldn't feel the guilty feeling, then something must be wrong. But no, I looked that up in the Greek and studied this out. Having a conscience that's seared with a hot, hot iron literally means having a consciousness of guilt and sin and condemnation. So to have a conscience that is seared, that can't feel or can't sense the freedom that Christ came to, to bring to deliver us from a guilty conscience that was under the law, that was the reward from being under the law. You had a guilty conscience and people took animals and sacrificed them yearly, but that the Bible plainly tells us that that didn't do anything to the purifying of the conscience and of the heart. Only grace can do that. So having a, having a, a conscience seared with a hot arm is just having that sin conscience and so much condemnation and guilt that you can't operate in life. You can't hear from God. Let's go on. It says, Forbidding to marry and committing, abstaining from uh, meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. So, everything that God has and gives, and he was talking about foods because back then they just come out from under the law. And some of these places where they went, they wasn't even under the law, but they still sacrificed to foreign gods and they ate those meats and it defiled some that was weak in their conscience, weak in the faith, baby Christians, others had no problem with it. Paul said, you know, I become all things to all people that I might win some. In other words, if meat, if this meat sacrificed to idols, you know, offended someone who was a baby Christian, then I abstained from it because his heart was that people would get set free from a sin conscience and be able to worship God in spirit and truth. So I want to tell you today that uh, don't worry, you know, if you think that your conscience has been seared as a hot, hot iron, don't worry. You know, what that means is you need to get rid of that sin conscience. Jesus paid the ultimate price, shed his precious blood through by the eternal spirit, offered himself uh, up to God so that he could purify all of heaven and purify your conscience as well. So what we want to do is we want to have a, a, uh, a conscience of God 
and not a conscience of guilt. When we have a conscience of guilt carrying that burden around all the time, that means our conscience has been seared. So I'm going to tell you today that Christ has come to deliver you from a sin conscience, from a sense of guilt, because in him there is no guilt. He took your shame. He took your reproach. He nailed that thing to the cross so that you could have life and life abundantly.